different era, wouldn't it? The maternal image was almost universally ignored. His voice too gave the impression he was speaking a language not usually on his tongue. Joe took an empty chair, hardly bothering to note its salient qualities. His body seemed to underline fit underline into the piece of furniture as though it had been molded to his order. Joe said, I think maybe I'll take that fair drink, Doc. Reston Farrell said, of course, and then something else Joe didn't get. Whatever the something else was, a slot opened in the middle of the table and a glass so clear of texture as to be all but invisible was elevated. It contained possibly three ounces of golden fluid. Joe didn't allow himself to think of its means of delivery. He took up the drink and bolted it. He put the glass down and said carefully, What's it all about, huh? Warren Brett James said soothingly, Prepare yourself for somewhat of a shock, Mr. Prentera. You are no longer in Los Angeles. Yeah, think I'm stupid? I can see that. I was about to say, Los Angeles of 1960. Mr. Prentera, we welcome you to Nuevo Los Angeles. To where? To Nuevo Los Angeles and to the year, Brett James looked at his companion. What is the date, old calendar? 2133, Reston Farrell said. 2133 AD, they would say. Joe Prentera looked from one of them to the other, Scowen. What are you guys talking about? Warren Brett James said softly, Mr. Prentera, you are no longer in the year 1960, you are now in the year 2133. He said uncomprehendingly, you mean I've been, like, unconscious for? He let the sentence fall away as he realized the impossibility. Brett James said gently, hardly for 170 years, Mr. Prentera. Reston Farrell said, I am afraid we are confusing you. Briefly, we have underlined transported underline you, I suppose one might say, from your own era to ours. Joe Prentera had never been exposed to the concept of time travel. He had simply never associated with anyone who had ever even remotely considered such an idea. Now he said, you mean, like, I've been asleep all that time? Not exactly, Brett James said, frowning. Reston Farrell said, suffice to say, you are now 173 years after the last memory you have. Joe Prentera's mind suddenly reverted to those last memories and his eyes narrowed dangerously. He felt suddenly at bay. He said, maybe you guys better let me in on what's this all about. Reston Farrell said, Mr. Prentera, we have brought you from your era to perform a task for us. Joe stared at him and then at the other. He couldn't believe he was getting through to them. Or at least that they were to him. Finally he said, if I get this, you want me to do a job for you. That is correct. Joe said, you guys know the kind of jobs I do? That is correct. Like hell you do. You think I'm stupid? I never even seen you before. Joe Grantera came abruptly to his feet. I'm getting you to hear. For the second time, Reston Farrell said, where would you go, Mr. Grantera? Joe glared at him then sat down again as abruptly as he'd arisen. Asters, casters, 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 casters. Let's start all over again. I got this straight. You brought me some screwy way all the way. Here. Okay, I'll buy that. I seen what it looks like out that window. The real comprehension was seeping through to him even as he talked. Everybody I know, Jesse, Tony, the kid, Big, Lewis, everybody, they're dead. Even Big Lewis. Yes, Brett James said, his voice soft. They are all dead, Mr. Prentera. Their children are all dead, and their grandchildren. 
the two men of the future said nothing more for long minutes while Joe. Rantera's mind whirled its confusion. Finally he said, what's this bit about you wanting me to give it to? Some guy.